Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to attempt to shed some light on quite a polarizing topic, and that is, why did professional sports athletes make more than doctors? With economics at the forefront of the discussion, let's get right into it. So as of May 2022, so just last month, Forbes has revealed the list of the top 10 highest paid athletes in the world. They've noted that according to their estimates, just the top 10 athletes alone have been paid a whopping $992 million over the last 12 months. That's just shy of $1 billion in a single year being paid to just 10 individual people. Since I know that you're curious, I'll show you the breakdown and then we'll get into why these stars make the income that they do. If you couldn't care less about this list of athletes, well then don't worry, I got you. I've left a timestamp in the description so you can skip right to the sweet, sweet economics of it all. So at number one, there's Lionel Messi, a household name for football or in North America, soccer fans, earning approximately $130 million when totaling his income from on and off the pitch. Number two is LeBron James, professional NBA star for the Los Angeles Lakers, earning $121.2 million. Number three gives Messi a run for his money when discussing the greatest footballer of all time, and that's Cristiano Ronaldo, earning about $115 million, pretty evenly split between on and off field earnings. Number four is Neymar, yet another pro footballer, earning about $95 million. Number five is the Golden State Warriors' Steph Curry with $92.8 million, and directly beneath him at number six is his former teammate who now plays for the Brooklyn Nets, Kevin Durant at $92.1 million. The athlete in seventh on this list literally makes 99% of his earnings from off the court and that's the Swiss pro tennis player Roger Federer who earns $90 million in sponsorships and other business endeavors while making just $700,000 from his actual tournament winnings per year. Number eight is Mexican boxer Canelo Alvarez who earned $90 million from May 2021 to May 2022. You may have heard of this next athlete as he's won a Super Bowl, or seven, and has secured the undisputed spot as the GOAT of American football. That's Tom Brady with an estimated income of $83.9 million. The final athlete, number 10 on Forbes list, is the Milwaukee Bucks superstar Giannis Antetokounmpo with earnings estimates at $80.9 million. So that's the top 10 highest paid athletes and averaged out, that's just over $99 million per athlete in a single year. How insane is that? Now there's a lot of information giving varying salaries for doctors, so bear that in mind when considering this list. Let's now take a quick peek at the highest earning average compensations of doctors according to one 2020 physician compensation report. So neurosurgeons make $746,544 per year. Thoracic surgeons are in second with $668,350. Orthopedic surgeons make on average $605,330, while plastic surgeons make $539,208. Oral and maxillofacial surgeons make $538,590, while vascular surgeons make $534,508. Physicians in the cardiology specialty make approximately $527,231. Those in the radiation oncology, $516,016. Gastroenterology specialists make an average of $485,817. And radiology specialists make $485,460. And by now, I know what you're thinking. Well, obviously there's a huge disparity since you're taking the average surgeon's salary and comparing it to the top individual earners in sports. Moreover, you're including the athletes on and off court earnings. That's like comparing apples to oranges. And to you, the person thinking that to themselves, I applaud you for catching such a fallacy. Let's compare apples to apples, shall we? Let's pick a country, say the United States. Seems like a solid choice. Now let's take their top earning sports league and we'll compare it to their top earning class of surgeons. So the top earning sports league is the NBA and the top earning physician specialty is neurosurgery. There are all sorts of numbers being thrown around out there, even one site which claims that the bottom of the pay scale for brain surgeons is less than $20,000 per year. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not sure how comfortable I'd be on the operating table of a US surgeon bringing in less than $10 an hour. 
But the point is, the validity of some of the earnings estimates are questionable, so we are using the best estimate available for our discussion. But numbers may vary source to source. So we know from earlier that the figure we're using for the average neurosurgeon's annual compensation is $746,544 per year. Well, here's a little fun fact for you. According to Yahoo Sports, in the NBA, players took home an average salary of just over 7.34 million US dollars for the 2021-2022 season. Yes, you heard that correctly. That's almost 10 times the average income of a neurosurgeon. But if you think that's crazy, the lowest annual salary of an NBA player in the 2021 to 2022 season was over $925,000. So a 19 year old rookie, just one year out of high school can walk into that salary if he's got the skill set. Meanwhile, to be a neurosurgeon, all you need to do is complete four years of pre-medical education at a college or university, four years of med school, resulting in an MD or a DO degree, a one year internship in general surgery, and then five to seven years in a neurosurgery residency program. This totals 14 to 16 years of your life to education after completing 14 years in elementary and high school. That's a total of 28 to 30 years of schooling total. The youngest neurosurgeon in the world achieved the status at 29 years old. However, due to the magnitude of post high school education required, most neurosurgeons become neurosurgeons no sooner than the age of 34 years old. Now, some neurosurgeons complete a fellowship after residency to specialize in a particular area. And then there's the continuing education aspect, annual meetings, conferences, scientific journals, and of course, research to keep up with the advances in the complex field of neurosurgery. So yeah, to say that there's a great deal of work that goes into it is definitely an understatement. On the flip side, to be an NBA star, you would primarily need two things, athletic talent and time to practice, like a lot of time to practice. It's a safe bet that most NBA stars dedicate their lives to basketball. Now, I don't want to in any way underrepresent the amount of work that professional athletes put in to remain top caliber competitors, but just because they aren't as highly educated as neurosurgeons doesn't mean they don't work hard. What's got people up in arms is how a basketball player who plays a sport for entertainment of the masses can make more money than a neurosurgeon who in many cases is performing life-saving surgeries. Well, the answer to this controversial question lies in the economics of each career. Let's take a look at the economics of the two industries which employ these two very different career paths, the entertainment industry and the medical industry. Once again, we'll be looking at the United States for simplicity, but these concepts and values can very easily be extrapolated to other nations and their corresponding industries. So in 2021, the US healthcare costs were estimated to be around 4.1 trillion US dollars. Of that amount, only 8% of it actually goes towards paying doctors. For those of you who want to know the math on that, it comes to about $328 billion out of that 4.1 trillion. There were said to be 1,062,205 professionally active doctors in the US. If we take our expected sum of their earnings, that's $328 billion, and we divided it by 1.06 million doctors, that's about $308,792 per doctor per year. That's not too far off of estimates, but let's narrow down our umbrella term of physicians or doctors to just neurosurgeons. After all, we want to compare apples to apples. So there's an estimated 3,500 neurosurgeons operating in the US. The estimated annual compensation, as noted before, is said to be around $746,544 per year. Multiplying that out, it implies that out of the 328 billion US dollars allocated to paying employees, about 2.6 billion is used to pay the 3,500 neurosurgeons in the country. So out of the 328 billion US dollars, about 0.8% of it goes towards paying neurosurgeons. Now let's take a look at how the MBA compares. The 2021 to 2022 sum of the roster counts from all 30 MBA teams is about 540 players. That includes two-way players for all you MBA fans. According to one study, the revenue of 30 MBA teams in 2021 stands at $6.41 billion. However, it's worth noting that these estimates vary from source to source and that specifically this year they've been lower than the past years due to COVID. Multiplying the average salary by the player count yields an estimate of $3,963,600,000 in total salaries. That's approximately 60% of the league's revenue which goes directly towards paying the players. But what about their value added to society? Shouldn't saving lives earn more than slam dunking a basketball? Well, it's very difficult to put a monetary value on a life, though it is computed in value of statistical life calculations. I'll let you research that concept on your own time. 
but long story short, it's quite difficult to assess the monetary value that a neurosurgeon brings to the world. They could save a child who ends up discovering the cure to cancer down the road, or they could just as easily save a child who ends up growing up to be a sociopathic serial killer. Who knows? I'm not saying that the hopefulness of one's future dictates their value. I'm just saying it's very complicated. But you know what's much easier to quantify? How much athletes and their sports teams bring into the economy and sales. We can add up all of the sales for tickets to games, sports channel subscriptions, advertising deals, jerseys and other merchandise sales, arena revenues, brand revenues, and more. You can actually quantify this amount and, well, it's a lot of money. But there's also the consumerism aspect to consider. Americans would much rather spend their money buying tickets to a basketball game than to donate the money to the medical industry, especially when the amount of money paid back to its employees is so much higher in the entertainment industry. You need to look at the money that an NBA star brings into the economy to see the monetary value of what they do. It's clear that the NBA, which has significantly less players than the US has neurosurgeons, is bringing in a lot more money through a variety of sources. Each sports fan who supports a player from a team is a paying customer who contributes to the NBA's value. With neurosurgery, there's obviously significantly fewer paying customers, yielding less money in the industry to be paid back out to the doctors. This, coupled with the fact that the NBA pays its players a much larger share of the profits than does the medical industry to their physicians, is why professional sports athletes earn substantially more than doctors. While we looked at the US specifically, these principles can easily be extrapolated throughout the entire world. We hope that this video will offer some insight and would really appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, comment your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.